What's up guys? Nathan here from Axe Recruiting. And I just wanted to talk to you guys a little bit about the circumstances that are taking place with COVID-19, the economy, the shutdowns, the pandemic itself. So as you know, as of this week, I think 4.4 million additional Americans have applied for or filed for unemployment and trying to get the benefits. I think we're at a total of 26 million now Americans who are out of work and looking for work and opportunities. We're getting messages all the time about people who are permanently laid off uh, or let go uh, permanently without opportunities to, to come back to these companies. These companies are sitting in the ether right now. They don't know exactly what's happening. We don't know how the governments are going to respond with transitioning back into society. So what I wanted to do is come on here, give you guys some tips on how to get competitive in what is most definitely and absolutely gonna be a competitive job market. So how do you stand out when you're dealing in a competitive job market in place? You know, we've got millions and millions of people out of work. It looks like with social distancing, continuing to persist and be something that'll be mandated as policy, that we're not gonna be able to work as close together. So what that means is companies are actually gonna have to lean out their workforce. We might be talking, operating at 50% of what they used to, depending on the nature of their work. You know, service industries, concerts, some things might not even be able to happen. So keeping that in mind, if the workforce is potentially gonna reduce, or they're gonna find ways to work and operate leaner, a lot of these companies are gonna have to let people go permanently. And as a result of that, um, you know, it's gonna get real competitive. So how are you gonna stand out as an obvious candidate and person for the job when we're now gonna be entering a place and time where everyone's really after the next opportunity? You know, this is really, we're entering what I call the employer's market, okay? So employers are gonna have a wide array of candidates to choose from, from a variety of backgrounds, industry, what have you. It's an opportunity for them to restart if they're capable of doing so. And the talent pool is just gonna be up, up, up. So how are you gonna make sure you're at the top of that list? Well, let me give you a few tips that I actually have in respects to interviewing that might help you out just a little bit as you go through this interview process in the market when you re-enter uh, the, the workspace, okay? So the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do if you are successfully invited to interview with a company. First thing you're gonna to wanna to do is your pre-interview planning. So, sure, you've read the job description, you might be a little desperate, you might be out there looking for almost anything you can get as long as it can you know, cover the bills, take care of your family, keep a roof over your head. I don't blame you. You should be looking for things you love to do, but I mean, if you're looking for opportunity, you need to understand the opportunity. If you don't understand the opportunity, you don't know what you're getting yourself into. And more importantly, you're not gonna know what you're talking about when you walk into that room. So it might go without saying, but a lot of candidates miss this. Some really strong candidates I've screened have completely dropped the ball on some of this stuff. And you know, these, these were accredited people who definitely should have got the job, but they screwed up in the interview. And it can happen that easily. So. What you're gonna to wanna to do is do as much research on the company as possible. Take notes, details, you know, check the news out. Has anything recent happened to them uh, in terms of success stories or innovation? Anything you can really latch onto, sink your teeth into, and really show them that you've actually done your homework on the company and you, you care what you're talking about. Um, another really good thing to do is dig into who the interviewers are. So, are you interviewing with the general manager, a sales manager, head of HR, director, owner of the company? I don't know, but if you don't know who you're dealing with before you go in there, same as the company, you're dead. You know, there's gonna be someone who goes in there who's done their homework, knows this individual. They might even have someone coming in who's a referral from a friend. You gotta beat that person out. How are you gonna do it? You better dig into this person and find out some information about them as well that you can speak to in terms of interest, professional accomplishments, it doesn't really matter. Show them that you've done the homework and that you care. That's really, really important. So that's first. 
dig into the company, dig into the people that you're gonna be interviewing with, okay? Second, you're gonna wanna bring something like a brag book or past accomplishments with you. I mean, you might have trophies, recognition from work, could be academic accomplishments if you're still coming out of school, sports, I don't really care. Um, but it's gotta be something that speaks to your character, okay? And your work ethic if possible. So what I mean by that is compile, it doesn't actually have, you don't have to bring hardware in, okay? I mean, it might look a little weird if you brought in a gym bag full of hardware of all your past accomplishments. I've seen it done, it works great, but you can take pictures of it, build a nice portfolio, a brag book, if you will, to bring in and speak to your accomplishments. Because oftentimes you get asked why you're the person for the job. Well, why I'm the person for the job or why you're the person for the job is because X, Y, Z, A, B, C, okay? the philanthropy you've done. You've organized teams before, maybe not on a professional level, but you've organized philanthropic things before. You've organized team events before, you know. You've you've demonstrated academic excellence. You've demonstrated leadership through different things you've accomplished in extracurricular activities. You have awards in your industry, you know, publications. There's lots of things depending on what your professional personal uh, experience are that you can speak to and bring to. Because a lot of people are great professional interviewers, okay? So a lot of people are going in there and they're wowing people and they're blowing them away. And this goes for you to all you hiring managers out there who are hiring, by the way. You know, don't hire a professional interviewer. Hire the right person for the job, okay? There's a lot of people who can do the fugazi fugazi stuff on you and before you know it, you got a bad hire. They're out the door in the first 90 days and you're wondering what the heck happened. All right, so it's really important to vet people and to prove and vet yourself really that you're the man or woman for the job and the position. And in order to do that, you know, provide evidence. Evidence is very, very important when it, when it comes to interviewing. So if you can do that, that's fantastic, okay? So that's number two, all right? Number three, because you've done your research, this ties in a little bit. To, to number one, but you need to ask really, really strong questions behind the company and behind these individuals. Okay, so maybe there's something in the news recently that is of recognition to the company. Bring it up in the interview. Ask more questions about it. Dig into it. Ask how long it took. Ask more details about the project or the accomplishment or, or the, the other companies or people that they've helped, the community involvement whatever the story is. Sink your teeth into it, leverage it in the interview. Same goes for leveraging the person you're actually interviewing with. You know, leverage that information, use it to your advantage, build rapport, and leave a lasting impression on that individual, okay? Um, another thing that a lot of <clears throat> companies don't do, or candidates rather don't do, is they don't put themselves in the frame of mind that they're actually interviewing the company, okay? So on top of just digging into the company and asking questions on the individual, bring up really solid questions about the opportunity and the role. You know, you're gonna know best based off of the research you've done and the opportunity that you're applying for, but dig into it, find out as much as you can uh, or find out what you really want to know about the role and that you've actually thought about it uh, living a day in life in this position. And you know, you've put a lot of thought into the types of questions you would ask and things you might encounter if you're actually living this experience and had the job. So provided you didn't fumble over yourself and uh, make mistakes in their predetermined interview questions, you've asked some great ones, you've done your homework, You've brought concrete evidence that you're the man or woman for the job. Provided all that goes well, you should be in pretty good shape. Before you leave that interview, you're gonna trial close the hiring manager, okay? I don't care if you're not in sales. It's sales job, nurse, uh, lawyer, it doesn't really matter what you're doing. You got a trial close. We've got 26 million people 
looking for opportunities in America. Another two in Canada. You need to trial close the hiring manager. Okay, so before you leave that room, you need to ask them, hey, before I go, Mr. Hiring Manager, just got one last quick question for you. Is there any reason in your mind why you wouldn't see me being the perfect man or woman for the job? And if you do see me as being the perfect candidate and fit for your company, is there any reason why you wouldn't give me and offer me the position here today. Do it. You might not close them in one shot, but I guarantee you're gonna make them smile and I guarantee you're gonna leave a lasting impression and chances are pretty good you're gonna get a call the next day. Okay, so always trial close. They will remember those who close them. Now, once you leave the interview, it's really important to do this same day. You've got to write an email thanking them for the opportunity and time and chance to interview and be a part of their company. Okay? So follow up by email. If they've given you a timeline after that as to when they're going to get back to you, uh, wait that out. Three days, one week, 10 days, whatever that is, phone call. All right, so if you don't hear from them by, they said end of business, 10 days, seven days, I'm calling them end of business on seven days, 10 days. I wanna show them how interested I am in the opportunity and that I'm not going away until they tell me this deal is dead. This opportunity is dead, this job is dead to me and I gotta move on and go find something else. All right, so follow up, follow up, follow up, follow up. Okay, so I hope this information's been pretty valuable to you. These steps are really crucial in securing opportunities and just a little playbook that you really should run every single time that you're going out there and looking for a, a company or role, all right? So let's run this back real quick. Step one, you're doing your homework on the company and on the interviewer hiring manager, people who are gonna be involved in the interview process. Step two, you've gotta bring a brag book. Bring your past accomplishments, bring your credentials, show them you're not just BS on paper and you're gonna get the job done. Step three, continue to ask really good questions. You're not just interviewing, you're the interviewee. So bring some really well thought out questions that you wanna to bring to the table about the company and the role and the expectations. Four, close. You've gotta close, you've gotta ask for the role. I don't care if there's five interviews, step process, every single process, close. Your trial closing, your trial closing, your trial closing for that opportunity. Maybe they'll love you so much, they'll fast forward you to step five and it's done, they'll close, they'll close the job rack and it's over, it's all yours, all right? And step five, follow up. Follow up, follow up, follow up. Thank you email, same day after the interview. And then I would call at the end of business or after the deadline, shortly after the deadline that they said they'd reach out to you and let you know whether you were the person for the job or not. Do not let them get away without talking to you, you figuring it out and you closing and getting that role or at least finding out that you didn't so you can move on and find the next opportunity. Hope this has been helpful, guys. Uh, visit axrecruiting.com if you're interested in seeing some open opportunities. We've got a lot of great content there as well for you to read on how to successfully navigate this pandemic as well as interview successfully and create a, a really strong resume. And follow me on Instagram, n8.where as well. This has been my quick overview on how to successfully win an interview and get the job, especially coming out of this pandemic. I wish you all luck and take care of yourselves, all right? Be safe, be healthy.